Hello world, it's me, Jamangbai. And I am Optimus Prime. Hmm, did you just say something? For today's episode, I'll be building one of the greatest heroes to ever roll out on this planet and beyond. He's more than meets the eye, a robot in disguise, Optimus Prime. Introducing the Furai model, Optimus Prime from Flame Toys. This model was based on the G1 version of the character, only a bit more stylized. I swear he just said something. This isn't my first Furai model. I built Bumblebee, I just built Megatron, and then there's Starscream. But this is the one that I've been looking forward to the most. Everything you see right here is what's inside the box. And when it's all done, it will look like this. But we'll get to that later. Let's build up! Build up. the meaning of this optimus come to save the day i presume i am here to stop you from destroying the city stop me <laughs> oh prime you have no idea what you're really up against do you who is really behind this this is our home now megatron we should respect it no matter prime I have no interest in destroying Earth, but I'm not opposed to making a few, shall we say, improvements? <laughs> Bumblebee, you've got to break through Megatron's shield! <laughs> Tron's name. <laughs> Autobots, Megatron is headed for that steel tower. Move out. Can 
can you hear it, Optimus? It's calling out to those Insecticons, somehow directing them. Destiny awaits below. As for you, I just engaged the security system. Good luck getting in, Prime. <laughs> Caltran 1, analyze. It's a ship of unknown origins, buried beneath the city. How do I shut down the security system? 
It appears there is a dual layer security protocol in place. You'll first need to disable three sub generators. Once disabled, the primary generator will be vulnerable. Autobots, transform and roll out. Alright, let's take a look at the food eye model Optimus Prime. Was it more than meets the eye or Decepticon in disguise? You watch your mouth when you speak of a superior race such as the Decepticon! Would you shut up? <laughs> Alright, let's find out. Optimus took 2 hours and 40 minutes to build and the experience overall was mostly positive. If there were any issues at all, it was mostly attaching parts together because they were pretty tight. Not Kong Kong tight, but enough to frustrate you if you decide to skip hand day at the gym. Whatever that means. <laughs> there were some areas that snapped together just fine, and some, after attaching, were a little loose. I'll get to that later. Bringing the torso parts together, however, was pretty stressful. I had a similar level of frustration building Bumblebee. I'm sure I could have found an easier way, maybe heating up the ball peg or something, but I decided to live a difficult life and struggled. <laughs> One thing's for certain, once it's in there, it's in there. I mentioned loose earlier, and so began a bunch of my own faults. The ball peg on the base of the neck went on easily, but it was very loose. Instead of leaving well enough alone, I used super glue rather than a few coats of thin cement. And what do you know? No movement. And I'm not going to move it because if I do, I'll break Optimus's neck. And I feel like Prime has been through way too much in his life already. Thanks, Hot Rod! Apparently not enough in his life, since the arms also seem to hate staying put around the biceps. So again with the super glue, with an ideal amount on the right and a little too much on the left, and voila, a broken left bicep joint. I twisted the right joint a decent amount to create a coating, but I neglected the left side so when I went to twist the left side, the peg broke instantly. In the end, I had to glue this part together just to keep it together. Now we're down a neck and bicep joint when I check the flex. This kit also comes with decals, which I'll say your mileage may vary. For my personal experience, these gold windshield decals were impossible to apply to his chest. Instead, I went for my gold Gundam marker to fill them in. But let's be honest, you probably can't tell, right? No worries. To be fair, it doesn't seem like Hasbro cares much about details on their figures either. Okay, sometimes they do. I got a question for you Transformers fans. Do you prefer Optimus Prime to have dual Autobot emblems on the shoulders or just on one side? I went with both because they gave me the option, but let me know what you guys think in the comments. Optimus Prime is as Optimus Prime gets right here. This is a very stylized realization of the G1 version of the character. He dons what I would consider cartoon accurate colors, reds and blues, grays and yellows straight off the screen. As far as detailing, the most that I've done is panel lining and the not so noticeable gold marker apps to the headlights. I love that Prime's eyes are a translucent blue, but I wish they would have done something similar to the Siege figures like Soundwave or Shockwave, where a little shine of light on the back of the head gives a glow to their eyes. Sorry Soundwave. <laughs> this model reminds me of the amazing Yamaguchi Optimus Prime figure from Kyoto's Rebel Tech line. While that figure dons more of a bulky look, the Furai model goes for a more athletic appearance. Sadly, I don't own that figure, but this model fills the void. Kinda. Although this is a model kit, it actually feels like an action figure. At least to me it does. It has a really nice weight to it, and it feels like the weight is evenly distributed throughout the entire model. Now I wouldn't go as far as to say that this is a better option, because this model kit does model kit stuff that reminds you that this is a model kit. However, there is something noteworthy here that the Yamaguchi Prime does not have. I'll get to that shortly. Rebel Tech figures are monsters when it comes to articulation, and it's safe to say that the articulation isn't so bad with the Furai model, but definitely not the best. Right now I'm using Rebel Tech poses as references to see how close I can get to these poses. Some are great, while others, not so much. Especially when it comes to that model kit stuff that I speak about. Ugh. And also that whole episode with me using super glue. But poses aside, the missing link between the Rebel Tech Prime and this Furai model is the ability to open a chest to reveal the matrix of leadership. While I think this is a cool addition, I wish it was a removable accessory. But given that the chest region has this cover, I can understand why they went in that direction. After building my third Furai model with this guy, I have to say that the scaling of these models are a bit strange. 
While this model scales pretty well with the Hasbro line, put him next to the Futurai model Bumblebee and everything becomes clear. Bumblebee is way too big here. The Hasbro Transformers give a better idea of how these two characters should scale with each other, but I'll just assume that Flame Toys just doesn't care, because Devastator, I'm looking at you! Optimus Prime comes with a collection of hands and his signature weapons. You take back what you said about us at once! Uh, would you get out of here already? <laughs> his hands are all mirrored, so you will get two of each, including closed fists, pointing fingers, dynamic action hands, weapon holding hands, and grabbing hands for opening his chest to reveal the Matrix. He's also armed with his signature Ion Blaster, an Energon Axe. Along with the hands, the Energon Axe pegs right into one of the wrist sockets just like so, and you can swap between either weapon holding hands for his Ion Blaster. And that's all for the accessories. The Furai model Optimus Prime is filled with articulation, but since I decided to use super glue in some areas, I won't be able to show it off in its entirety, but there's plenty to see here. Let's check the flex! Optimus Prime stands at six and a quarter inches tall. Let's take a look at some size comparisons. Here he is next to a bunch of Hasbro Primes that I own. Furai Megatron, Furai Noodles, I mean Starscream, Furai Bumblebee, and because she's nearby, again, the Funko Pop a Aloy. Furai models are a bit of a mixed bag for me, but I can easily rank it in my top three when it comes to branded model kits that I've built so far. This model isn't perfect by any stretch, but it understood the assignment in delivering a mostly solid model of an iconic hero. It's easily the best out of the four that I've built. It has great articulation, but remember, although it can rival an action figure, it's a model kit first. I could have made better choices with the use of super glue, but honestly that's on me. I'm sure I'll build other offerings from Flame Toys in the future, so I'm sending this message to any surviving Furai model kits taking refuge on store shelves. I am here, and I am waiting to build. And that wraps it up for today's episode of Jamang by Builds. I'd like to thank each and every one of you for watching. If you're new around here, I hope you decide to stick around because there's more on the way. I'll catch you guys in the final episode of this season. But in the meantime, keep on building. Peace!